Hello and welcome to project number 4, Hamming Sekdad. Let's have a quick overview about what we are going to do next. First we are going to create a Quartus project, after this synthesize the top module, next connect the design to the FPGA pins, and in the end program the DE1 SOC board that has an Altera Cyclone 5 FPGA. After this we are going to do a quick demonstration on the DE1 SOC board for this project. As you know from part 1 of this tutorial, Hamming codes are a set of error correction codes that can be used to correct 1-bit errors and detect 2-bit errors that can occur when data is stored or moved between a sender and a receiver. Let's see how we can implement a Hamming SecDead circuit on a D1 SOC board that has a Cyclone 5 FPGA. You need to open your project folder and create this directory structure. The Quartus project is going to be placed in the send folder. Let's open now Quartus. New project. Next. We change the working directory. We type here project. Now we add the RTL files. You can see that we have six RTL files. Next. Now we select the FPGA. This is my FPGA. Here you don't change anything. Finish. You click here, select files. And then click on the top module, right click, and set as top level entity. Now we compile the design. Ok, so now the synthesis process finished successfully. Let's see how our RTL looks like. Now you should be able to see the same picture that I showed you during the part 1 of this project. This doesn't depend on the FPGA that you are currently using. Let's see how the noise module synthesized. Here we have the RTL code and here we have the schematic that the synthesis tool generated from our code. As you can see, OData is created by an 8-bit XOR as we have here. And here you can see some multiplexers that are creating the noise signal out of the iNoise input bus. Let's move to another module. If you want to zoom in and out you should click on the control key and spin your mouse wheel. If we look at the Hamming encoder here we create the parity bits by having three input XOR gates, the ones over here, and the O parity is created by using a wide XOR with seven inputs. If we look at the decoder, we can see that it recreates the parity bits over here corresponding to this code. This wide XOR over here is the overall parity. And this decoder over here is used to calculate the syndrome. Here we have the output parity bits logic, which is the one from here. Nice, right? When we open the priority encoder, we can see this kind of structure that is similar to a cascade. That's how a priority encoder looks like. After this we have some more logic. 
to create the outputs. And that is it. And here we have the seven segment decoder that creates the control signals for the seven segment display. It's a decoder that uses some OR gates to control all the segments. OK, let's close this and assign the pins now. Let's open now the pin planner and assign the pins. After you finish, your pins should look like this if you have the DE1 SOC board like I do. Remember that you can download the complete project from ovisign.com courses. Let's program now the FPGA. I already pressed auto detect. Change file. Select this. Click on the program configure and then start. Okay, you can see that the FPGA program successfully now. Let's switch over to the board. Okay, are you ready? Let's see how the Hamming SecDead behaves on my Altera D1 SOC development board. Here we have the 4 bit input that goes into the Hamming encoder. On the 4 LEDs, we have the output from the Hamming decoder. Here we have 5 bits for the noise module. On the 7 segment display, you can see the value of the syndrome. Let's play now with the decoder. I make the input into the encoder 1. The decoder correctly outputs a value of 1. I change the value to 5. The decoder changes the value to 5 also. I trigger a parity error right now. Because the parity error means that nothing inside the 7 bits needs to be corrected, the syndrome will remain the same and the output will also remain the same. Let's trigger now a 1 bit error. Now you can see that the 1 bit error LED is on. This being on and the value 0 over here mean together that bit number 0 was altered. We change the value of the noise to 3. By doing this we create an error on bit number 2. But as you can see the value of the output decoder remains the same because the decoder manages to fix the errors. We now alter the last bit of a Hamming 7.4 code. You can see that it outputs a current value of 6 for the syndrome. Now we clear again the noise vector. We set bit 4 from the noise vector. You can see that it creates a single bit error on the last bit of the Hamming code word. This is correct and it operates as expected. Now, if we make this one, we create a double bit error inside our input. As you can see now on the LEDs, we don't have a value of 5 displayed, but we have a value of 9. So the decoder incorrectly decodes the Hamming code word when we have a 2 bit error. This is also expected. You can see also that the syndrome points to a wrong value. But the 2-bit error shows us that the system is aware that we have a 2-bit error and can report this to an upper level module. So we can play as much as we like with 2-bit errors and you can see that they are incorrectly decoded. Now we trigger a 3-bit error. In this case, the 1 bit error is open, but the output on the LEDs is incorrectly decoded again. This is how a Hamming system works in real life. I would be very happy to see a picture with how you implemented this project on your development board. Please leave this in the comments. 
If you like this video and would like to see more FPGA tutorials, please like and subscribe to my channel. If you like this tutorial and you are interested in an easy path for learning Verilog for FPGA or ASIC design and verification, I gladly recommend you my course Verilog HDL Fundamentals for Digital Design and Verification. You can find the link in the video description. For more tutorials and support, you can join our Facebook community. Your strong Verilog foundation is only one click away.